Hi everyone, thanks for joining me in my studio. My name's Tom and this is an example of the sort of little videos that I'm offering over on my Patreon channel um, along with a lot of other exclusive content. In this particular video I am going to be talking about simple but accurate shapes. So when I'm teaching uh, both online and also in the real world I'm always 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 harping on about shape and tone. So that's taking into account tone, light and dark, but in this video I want to talk more about the shapes themselves and my other personal mantra that I'm always harping on about is simple but accurate shapes. So what do we actually mean by simple and accurate shapes? I'm going to give you a few quick demos and examples of exactly this. So basically what I'm looking at is breaking a subject down into simple shapes. It's almost forgetting what the actual subject is and just looking at it in terms of these sort of abstract shapes and how they link together. Generally starting from big shapes or general overall shapes and working towards the smaller shapes that are within them or around them. Um, there's lots of other videos where I talk about tone, but in this one I'm going to be focusing on the nature of the shapes themselves and what does it mean to make this shape accurate. So when I'm talking about a shape being simple, I just very much mean that we don't have to worry about detail, we don't need to worry about what colour it is or what tone it is, we're purely focusing on that shape. We don't even have to worry about necessarily what it actually represents as long as we get that shape accurate. And by accurate, we we don't necessarily mean, we definitely don't mean detail in any way. We want a simple shape, but we do need it to be accurate. And that accuracy is the difference between something looking like an apple or a lemon. But on, a, on maybe a more subtle thing, it's the difference in a face between a, a particular um, expression and another expression. Or it's the difference between one type of bird and another type of bird. So... It's this accuracy that's so important. And in some ways what I'm talking about here is the drawing aspect of painting. And so when I talk about drawing, a lot of people think that I literally mean we're taking a pencil or a bit of charcoal and we're drawing. But in this context, when I'm talking about drawing, I'm talking more about the way in which these different shapes interact with each other. Are they accurate? Are the proportions correct? The medium in which we use to draw is actually irrelevant. That's just the vehicle for drawing. So forget about drawing in this case being the medium, think about drawing as being the use of these simple shapes. I'm going to dive in and show you a few examples of them in practice. Alright guys, so I think the first thing to, to talk about is what do we actually mean by breaking a subject down into shapes and then we'll look at this idea of simple but accurate shapes. So we're going to start off with something, a subject where it's fairly easy to understand this principle of breaking it down into shapes. And I'm always telling people there's no right or wrong here. The shapes that I see might be slightly different from the shapes that you see when we're breaking this down. It's whatever it takes and however it helps you to see these shapes. But generally, I think as a, as a general rule, we're looking for the big shapes first and we're going to move towards the smaller shapes. And then after that, I'm going to talk about the difference between simple and accurate shapes versus not and why they're so important. So let's just quickly get into this. This is a really simple um, subject to understand this principle within because it is very simple shapes and it is very much an object. I'm also going to take something that's maybe uh, slightly less obvious, but look at how the same principle applies. But to start with, and charcoal's a nice, I know I was talking about the medium not mattering, but charcoal's an easy one to demonstrate with. So there's so many different options here. I'm kind of, for me, I'm kind of looking at that shape there as a starting point. One of the great things to get an accurate shape is to look for angle or the tilt of a particular area. And we can almost just translate it across. Something very much like that. So that's our kind of angle of that bit of head there. And then I'm seeing this shape here and it's slightly based on, on light and shadow. It's also just, just the way I'm looking at the subject. And all of these lines, and this is something I'm always really keen on, 
try and forget about doing something wrong or making a mistake. These lines are just markers to inform the next line. They're not necessarily a mistake in their own right. So, something like that. That's maybe a good start point. There's so many other different options though. Like you could start by breaking that head down into a square like that. You could then slot a little triangle on the bottom and a little triangle on the bottom there. You could then stick another triangle on the top here and you could stick another triangle or something like a triangle kind of in there. And then th those are the big shapes to start with. Then we go inside those big shapes and we look for smaller shapes. And that's when we start to get a bit more like the subject itself. So obviously that's fairly crude, but the idea is then we go back into those shapes and we start to move them around a little bit. And that sort of a thing. And it can be a lot easier drawing in straight lines. Then we then once we've got all of that in place, then we can start to explore the simple then we can start to explore the real subtleties of that shape. So that was another way to start it. This way, exactly the same principle. This angle here is important. That angle that runs through the eye to the tip of the beak is at that sort of angle there. And this is when we're getting into accurate shapes. You could see those shapes were dead simple. They were just squares and triangles, but they were accurate in relation to each other. The proportion of those shapes, both within themselves, so the proportion of that square edge to that square edge is important, just as the proportion of that square there is important to that distance there. So it's just learning to look and learning to observe in a particular way. That's what all of this is about. This is what underpins good drawing and good drawing is what underpins good painting. And it's easy in our painting journey to kind of get caught up in all of the, the techniques and the possibilities of painting. Sometimes we forget, I know I certainly do, we forget about the, the importance of drawing and being able to accurately observe shapes and place them in relation to each other. So again, we're going to end up with much the same as this. I'm just showing you that there's a different series of shapes you could use. And it's little things like if I drop a plumb line down from this point here where the beak meets the green, if I draw a line down, what do I hit? I very specifically hit the front of the chest. So we've got all of these little little markers that can can tell us how things are being placed. So if I drew a line down here, that tells me that the chest is nowhere near far over enough. It'd be more something like that. And this shape would be more like that. These are all just little examples of how to construct. There's a nice little shape here, you could argue. Yeah. Nice little triangle shape in there that comes like that. And it kind of does that. And then once we get to there, that goes into the back. So look at that, we've got a line that follows the beak here, comes into that triangle and flows out into the back. And this is something that could be known as drawing through. So we're drawing through the form and we're looking for ways that lines of rhythm or things that link up. So look at this line here that kind of does that. Kind of comes up here, cuts in about there and cuts out the back there. So th this is not going to be, this wouldn't be in the actual painting. What I'm showing you here are the lines are the way in which I'm observing the subject. They're not necessarily lines that I would draw, they're just things I'm looking for, little guidelines. This is an important distance there, the distance from there to there. And this is when we get into the accuracy of the shape. This distance here from the edge of there to there is the same as the distance from there to there. So I know I've got those two shapes right. It's these little things that give us the accuracy. What's that angle there? It's not that shallow, it's a little bit steeper. So again, we're getting into the accuracy or the specifics of these general shapes. 
and that's what makes it this particular bird rather than another bird. I've not quite got the beak shape right. The reason being my shape was too long compared to how high it was. Whereas if I go and reevaluate it, it's a little bit deeper and not quite as long and it just does that. So it's a, it was roughly the right shape, but it wasn't quite accurate enough. That is a longer line into there, and that's more kind of what we're after. So you can see that's sort of the thing we're after. All built up on simple shapes, and I, I chucked in a few extra principles that I wasn't planning to throw in there. Um, again, I've not quite got the beak right. It's not flat enough. So again, you can see it's, it's easy to observe incorrectly and we start to draw or paint what we think is going on, not what's actually going on. And that's okay, but we need to make it a conscious decision to do that rather than an accident. I think that's the key. Make your decisions about changing things conscious, not accidental. Okay, so that's about as good as I'm gonna get just to show you as an example. One thing I wanna talk about quickly then um, and I'll, I'll do more on this in another video, but is once we've got this big general shape, it's almost like that's our big general shape there. If you wanted a more gestural approach, actually, you could almost look for that shape first. Something like that, just as a start point. And then you, you and that once you've got your start point, then you chip away at it. So this is, this is a slightly looser approach, but the same principles that I'm using over here apply underpinning this loose approach there still needs to be an accuracy and also a simplicity to the shapes i'm always telling people you can make the shapes more complicated later we know that that lines up with there we know that that kind of does that and all of these little markers i've learned so much from these two studies that i'm in a better position to kind of be a bit more gestural with this study and we're going to end up with much the same result once I start pushing things around, but underpinning it are all of these principles we've just spoken about. So these are all ways to observe and abstract your subject. So let's quickly talk about the importance of the accuracy of these shapes. So if I take, say, some of these simple shapes here, So imagine that's, that's the bird kind of broken down into some interesting abstract shapes. Let's say there's a triangle there, a triangle there, and a square there, a triangle there, and then you stick the other stuff on top. What happens if I make that square longer than it should be relative to its height? What happens if I make that triangle the wrong proportion and that triangle far longer? and this triangle long and thin and not deep. We end up with something that resembles a bird, but because my shapes, they're still simple, but they're not accurate enough. This shape is not accurate enough within its own right, and it's certainly not accurate enough in relation to the other shapes. So it's these shapes and how they interact with each other. So let's try and turn that into a slightly more finished looking sketch. I'm never gonna get what I want with this particular one. It might be a cartoon version of the bird, which it looks like it's going to be in this case. But it's, it doesn't matter how hard I try, because I didn't get those big shapes right at the start, it's never gonna be that bird. And that's the point. <laughs> it's the difference between capturing something and getting close to it. So what are the key things to look for? I'll just reiterate those. It is, if you have a simple shape, it's the proportion of these different areas in relation to each other. How long is that shape relative to that one? If we have a triangle, how long is that shape relative to these two? Are these two equal? Or are they very specifically, this one is slightly shorter than that one? What are the different angles of these shapes? The easiest way to do it for me is to get my brush or my pencil and just hold it up against an edge. And I'm always checking my angles. I'm always checking my distances and I'm, you get quite good at noticing distances after a while, like things that look equal and then you measure them and they are. So if we take that distance here from I, top of the eye to there, top of the eye to there, same distance. I also spoke about these plumb lines that you could drop down and they're everywhere. You can, 
you know, if we take the top of the beak here and we draw a line across, we very specifically hit the middle of the eye. So that tells me straight away that my eye is a bit too high here. You've got all of these little markers that help you to place things. If you want a more gestural approach, as I showed you, you've got this idea of drawing through the subject to find the rhythm lines and to help build the subject in that sort of a way. So hopefully that makes some sort of sense. We want big shapes first and we're working general to specific and those shapes need to be accurate in relation to themselves but also in relation to the other shapes within the subject. One last thing I want to show you is if we have this overall very simple approach when we start to get into tone we start to think about other shapes within these existing shapes. So then I take this here and I've already spoken about that kind of being a triangle. That particular triangle is ever so slightly lighter than this area up here which in its own right could be just an abstract shape, kind of like that here. So all about however you see it, as I said, but it's, but it's very much darker than this light shape here. So this is kind of the light shape. This is a slightly darker shape. This interesting little abstract shape here that in very simple terms was a triangle, but when we really go into it, it's a shape more like that. And that shape is darker than that one, but not as dark as the darks of the eye. And then we start to really break our subject up. Within this funny shape that was this, there's a smaller shape there, which is probably much the same tone as this down here, so it's not as light as that. You can then take that a stage further and say, right, within this shape, there's another smaller shape here that's slightly darker still. And you can go on and on and on, breaking these very crude big shapes, simple but accurate shapes, into smaller and smaller shapes with smaller and smaller variations of tone to them. And this is the way that I'm kind of looking at my subject. And it's really completely personal preference how much you break up your subject. So I always say to people, it's exactly the same process as say something like photorealism or any other way of working. The only thing is I tend to stop at maybe taking a big shape and splitting it up into just maybe three or four smaller shapes, if that. Whereas someone that wants a higher refinement uh, or a, a more photorealistic look or just a more realistic look, um, they're just taking then this shape and breaking that up further still. And then they take that smaller shape and break that up further still. So it's just a case of how far do you want to go with this principle of simple but accurate shapes but continuing to just break them up further and further. So hopefully that makes some sort of sense in an easy to understand object. I'm going to now take the same principle into a slightly different subject and look at how it still applies.